Hi there, everybody. Uh, John Gums here with Dakota Grappler, uh, bringing you my coaching philosophy worksheet from day one of our Coaches Challenge. Now, uh, this is getting to you late, but if you can watch this, it'd be great. I'm going to quickly go through this uh, quick coaching philosophy worksheet of what I did. And then from there, I am going to uh, talk about day two a little bit. And then I'm just going to let you go to work because I tell you what this is this is going to be quite the prog process I guess for coaches to go through or something that maybe even some parents could see what coaches need to do most coaches in both North and South Dakota and across the United States are certified and so they've they've had to do many of these things uh, kind of understanding their coaching philosophy and and how they approach kids and making sure that they're the right person you know to lead these children and make them turn them into young adults so here we go now looking at this very first page like i said i'm going to the worksheet was blank previous to this and as you fill things in i did leave this on the dakota grappler message board which is over at wrestlingmessageboards.com also which is connected to dakota grappler so as you see this now again this is going to be put on youtube i'll put a link up and you will see it in different places, okay? Here, where you're gonna find it on both the Dakota Grappler website and not. So your coaching philosophy worksheet. Now I'm not gonna read everything to you here, but what it says is, how does your perception of a coach stack up to what your students say and what they want in a coach? Now this has been brought to my attention many times that our realization of what we see is important and what they see is important is two different things. So I, I quickly went through and I said, what do you think on this, what they look for? And as a wrestling coach, I think they'd want somebody that is wrestling smart. Now that means that the person is knowledgeable in the sport, loves wrestling. Uh, it could mean a lot of different things, different people. That's one of the things I put down. Uh, athletes want to see a coach who wants to help them. Uh, number one, I think that they know that if they're going into a sport, that they want somebody to make them better. And to help them out so they want their coach to be approachable they want a positive person somebody that is going to you know not be negative so that makes a big difference I know in my coaching philosophy uh, being a positive coach is 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 pr pretty much closer to the top of the list actually when I look up here but this is what I think students of course that's what they're asking what are the athletes looking for they're gonna look for somebody that's a motivator they want their coach to be fun, and they also want their coach to be understanding. So then as the worksheet goes through, and I wrote this out, and as you do it, you can fill out what you think. As you go to the second page, what it does is it fills out your information. And it says what students really want. Now it may surprise you to learn that uh, many of the attributes students look for in a coach have a little to do with the X's and O's and more about how you treat and value the student as an individual. And I tell you what, I got into some specifics here and it kind of compares up to what the students want. And some of these, as you look, I, I didn't rank them as well as I was thinking. I just kind of put them in order. And when I think if I'd have ranked them, I'd have kind of flipped them around a little bit here. But uh, they want somebody competent. Well, that's kind of what I was saying with wrestling smarts. That's kind of cool. That came up pretty close. Uh, what can I do then? I can stay up to date on wrestling moves and being organized with all aspects of wrestling. Uh, the coach who wants to help them. Approachability. That's the see that Now that's kind of number two in there in that list there. And I got approachable on this other side, so that kind of works out. I could move those over. But to, to be... Um, you know, I put over here, keep myself available. Now, this is what, you know, to help all athletes in all areas of the sport. Uh, confidence. They want their coaches to have confidence, meaning I believe they want their their coaches to have a belief and, and say, yes, we can do this. That you know, confidence from day one. They don't want to say, oh, our team is not good this year. Oh, what can I do? They, that's part of being not only confident but being positive. So that's, I think, I think that goes with being a positive person, kind of fell into that same area as the confidence. Fair and consistency. I think that is, that is pretty good. They want the coach to give them an opportunity just like they do everybody else. Okay, and I said over here, have a specific way to treat all, all wrestlers and do it in the same for all. 
so that uh, if there's a certain philosophy on how you coach kids, you should be coaching them all the same way, I guess. Okay. Motivator. Well, then they have motivation. That's pretty good. Uh, I can get to know my athletes and find out what motivates them and gets them ready to compete. That's what I can do. Uh, keep it fun. Well, that's kind of interesting. I say fun and personal concern. Um, basically, I can have a vested interest in all my, my athletes, my wrestlers. And then understanding and support they want. They want support. They want someone to back them up. And, and basically, you know, winning isn't as important as what some coaches might put on their list. You might see other coaches or maybe even you put on your list. Uh, what do you think? That they want to win. Well, that wasn't really on their list of the top things they want out of their coach or, or what they expect from it. So that's kind of interesting. Now, later on, next thing, I wrote down, what is your school's mission statement? Now, somebody somebody's school's mission statements will be different. I wrote down what Mandan's is here. So we won't go over that, but you can write down kind of what your school, maybe your club. If you're doing this as a club coach uh, going through this, maybe you want to take a look at what kind of mission statement you want to have. Uh, how do you want to have your club uh, looked at? This mission statement is actually really important when you think of the whole gamut of, of your philosophies. Now, if you look at this, Mandan is to provide students with rig rigorous and personalized learning experiences and help them develop the social and emotional skills to become productive citizens. Wouldn't that be great if we could do that in the wrestling room too? You know, I think we do a lot of... Uh, personal building, and also, you know, we turn a lot of young men into young adults. I know that. They're basically kids into young men, hopefully productive and good citizens along the way. Okay, then after that, uh, going on in this worksheet, and I know it's can be kind of long, this very first one. I didn't do quite as much in a lot of the other ones I prepared for the future, but I was working on about day four, day five today after school, and thought I got a decent amount done, so we can Keep going day to day, you guys. Uh, you need to examine your motivations, why you became a coach. That's part of this, this page here on page four. Um, basically, I've always thought of becoming a coach because I had such great influencers, I guess I'd, how to say it, uh, mentors, guys that I tell you what, I had a true belief in. These guys believed in me. I, I felt like I was needed, wanted. I was felt, you know, they had an impact on my life, and I said that I should give back too. So here's what I put. I became a coach because of the great impact many coaches have had in my life. They're, they, the coaches, are some of the biggest influencing individuals who shaped and molded many of the traits and skills within the person I am today, such as... Uh, skills as work ethic, uh, sportsmanship, motivation, and lifelong learning. I had several coaches that really pushed that, guess what, uh, the moves you're learning today might not be the moves in the future, so you, you have to stay up to date. Uh, not only that, but same within the classroom. Different things that you you learn, you know, you got to you got to evolve and, and get better. That's how it is. Or, you know, it's like doing the same thing over and over again. And you have success to begin with, but some days it, it'll change, so you got to get better. Okay. Um, I also said who would not want who would not want someone to who can give back in the same way. That's what I wanted to do. I'll be a positive mentor to future young adults. That makes a big difference for almost any coaches out there. Let's keep going because I don't want to make this too long here because we got other things we want to talk about tonight. Um, the student centered approach, that's kind of one of the big things that ha uh, happened in the coaching philosophy stuff. When you start learning, uh, some of the coaching classes you have to learn that of course, I don't know why a coach would be in it otherwise, except to help other, <laughs> other athletes, but there might be some out there, but you have to reflect on your current coaching approach and how you would implement a student centered approach if you needed to. And so that. And I wrote some good stuff. If you want to read through that, feel free. That's on page five. And how you want to mold and how you want to be a student-centered approach. And I, and if somebody wants to uh, put theirs in there, and I'll critique a little bit of what they do there. I'm, like I said, I'm not an expert on, on all this information, but I definitely feel I've got some background that I'd like to share. And, and maybe it will motivate somebody to get better themselves as a coach. 
Okay, page six. Now this is really where you have to break down your self-awareness and your coaching skills, how you rate your coaching skills. And I wrote down a ton. Now maybe I should have in the main sheet wrote some of these skills onto the side. So if you want to steal these, feel free. Um, like for an example I have here, technique, neutral position, top wrestling, bottom wrestling, and takedowns. Maybe takedowns and neutral position is different for some people, but I definitely think they're quite different because sometimes you're hand fighting, you're playing defense, you're sprawling, not just takedowns. So I, I put those in different categories. Um, escapes, pinning combinations, conditioning, strength training, moves, drills. There's so many I could have listed on here. And so, and then off the far side, describe how you can build upon the strengths or improve upon them. Now, I'm not sure. Maybe I rated myself a little high on some of these. But uh, doing this, I, I felt I wrote down some good examples of what I can do to make them better or keep them as they are. Uh, what my strengths are. I'm, I think I was quite self-aware of what I can do and what I can't do. And you need to be that way, too. You need to know where your weaknesses are. You need to know where your strengths are. Um, I've always thought that my motiv motivation was good, but when I'm around other people, I know I'm lacking in that motivation area. So I did rank myself a seven there, and maybe it should have been a five. I don't know. But like I said, I, I tried to get through this and, and make sure I could point out, get people and get this going in the right direction. So this is this actually could take some time as you're working through your coaching skills and your technical skills, and it explains everything you should be in here. And this should actually clear up a lot of things in your head when you go through this of, of what you are doing, if you're doing it right or not. Now you might want to go a little more brief on some of this when it goes to, you know, um, basically the skills you help to win contests. Maybe some of those skills could be hard work, you know, and, and ethics and different things that way, but tactical versus technical. Down here, you got the managerial skills or to interpersonal skills. Um, that's on the next page, page seven. And if you want to talk or get into some of those, I can later also. But that should basically lay out exactly what we're doing for um, this day one activity. Um, at the end here, I got communicating your coaching philosophy. I wrote down some things here, how you're going to communicate it. Now, one of my big things is as a coach, you got to set your rules, set your standards, um, and live by them. If you want all your athletes to do something, you should live by that too. Um, you know, and have your parents know your exact expectations out of them. If you are um, expecting them to be at every practice, um, if at all possible, then they're there. I mean, you can't let one wrestler slip and go get by or over Christmas break, they're going to go somewhere. They're going to go to some dance, some other school. They, they have to make, you know, a commitment. If you want their pro, if your program to succeed, you make the commitment they make the commitment. You're at every practice, they're at every practice. Um, all of all of that good stuff. <laughs> and then as, as the head coach, this might go a little bit farther when you get into having other coaches underneath you. Um, I like uh, some of the things when I interview you, the coaches on the coach's corner, of how they interact with their, their staff. And I, I learn a lot. Um, I have been I'm uh, lucky enough to be head coach a couple different times in a couple different sports. But they've always been in small schools. I wish I could have been a little bit in a bigger school as a head coach and get a few more people underneath me. Um, I was good at managing maybe one person because that's all I pretty much had, an ass one assistant. Tried to make them as equal as possible to me. But I would like to have seen what I could have done if I'd have more help and more individuals because I think uh, the more brains and the more – uh, how could you say it, hands-on approach where everybody could get an individual person helping them would be a phenomenal uh, thing. And so we'll go from there. So you can see this is this is the worksheet day number one. I'm hoping people go through and actually take some time. This is probably a good hour to two hours of work that you would have to put in to just clear out. And then, then what I would do is I would save it and make sure you save it in a, a location or print it so that you can have this. Put it in your file. Put it in a place you can reflect and change. You can, because uh, I know my philosophy has changed from day one I coached till today because you grow, mature, and you learn things. And so this can be adjusted. I did make it in, into a PDF here where you can adjust it. Now, some people might have a problem saving it because sometimes you save it. It'll go back to the original copy I have. So I usually say uh, save it as, you know, save it as 
in the top or something, go up into your files and do it a little bit different so you can save your information or make sure you right click on it and print it or what you need to do. Okay, let's look at what we're going into day two. Day two, let me get to that. Oh, there's some goals I was working on, some smart goals. Let's get into day two. There we go. Got it up on the screen. Okay, day two. I put this in day two. Uh, now, day two is the coach athlete relationship start because uh, you need you need to have this close relationship between you and the athletes. And if people don't realize that this is the type of, how could you say, uh, building of a young young man, then they don't know exactly what's going on here because you you actually these people become mentors and you have to have a trust level that's so much greater than you can imagine besides you know your parents your spouse later in life um this is the, s the second opportunity to really get to trust somebody you know your parents are are number one and the first people you start believing in but then after that you can start growth and you need to have that type of relationship with somebody else besides your parents and, and truly a lot of times it becomes those coaches in a lot of athletes lives but I put, like I said, I'll read this to you a little bit. I said I put this in day two because I feel it's a vital role we have to realize and embrace. The coach has to be so much more than there, uh, than there to show. Yeah, much more than there to show moves or to yell from the bench uh, during matches or even in the practice room. Understanding that the rest of the coach relationship is an important is as important a life lesson for each wrestler, okay, up there with finding a significant other, at least in my book it is, uh, you are building trust, understanding, an unconditional relationship that can develop into uh, your, you know, that you can depend on, basically. And I didn't write this out very good. My English is poor when I was writing this earlier. But in your lowest moments, on the on the mat or in the wrestling room and share the joys and the highlights and all the other stuff as victory and it doesn't always have to be with wins. I've I've had kids elated, you know, taking down a kid or even uh accomplishing some of their goals. I got yeah, I I you know accomplished something. If you if you're doing it right and setting individual goals on a weekly basis, you get kids at a different emotional level they they find individual successes and build on those to big big successes so and you keep going but i did find a couple good links in here and i'm going to post this on the grappler here soon for day two and that's some great some great reads out there one is basically a strong coach athlete relationship the importance now that's a great article to read i'll let you do that on your own uh six ways to build relationships with uh, student athletes that is another good one where you can find different things. And they're short. These things come from, now that actually is a track and field article. But when I went through, I said, guess what? It's pretty, sh how could you say, compact and short where you can get in and get the meat right off the bone so you can find out some information. Uh, today's task is a team building activity. I'm not going to make you do a worksheet. You had a big one yesterday for this. But I would like you to try one of these activities. Now, I've done both of these. I did one in actually a teacher's conference once, and then I did one of these in a wrestling room, and both of them turned out pretty good, and you get you get to find out who your people are in the room when you start doing this type of thing. So the first one, I've got, it's a positive approach. Um, you know, when it comes to coaching, now I'm going to push this a lot during these 12 days, is being a positive person makes such a difference. Um, a negative coach burns out quick, burns out the athletes, burns out themselves. Too much stress. Uh, the wrestling season's hard enough the way it is. All those weeks you're putting in, and then next thing you hear, you somebody yelling at you for doing something wrong, and, and then it just turns the wrong way. So we got, we got to build on that as coaches. That's one thing that I wish that I could do better all the time. Um, I don't consider myself a negative person. But if I catch myself, I'm hoping somebody straightens me out and says, let's let's change our statement. Or maybe as some of the young assistant coaches, maybe you could find a way to become a positive coach. And there are actually trainings out there, and I've done a lot of readings on positive coaching over the years. And 20 plus years of, of teaching and coaching type things where just to get better and the kids respond so much better. 
Okay, I put down here a positive approach gets the most from youth and high school athletes, which is what uh, coaches, parents, and athletes themselves want. Staying positive also helps youth get the most out of sports. Now, um, many coaches shy away from the one-on-one -on -one development to start, so I thought, you know, that I know that one-on-one -on -one relationship has to start somewhere, so you have to get to know your athletes, so I decided team building to start here. And it's easy. Here's the team builder stay, say something positive. Okay. Now there's two ways we're going to do this say something positive. Both of these are based off these activities. The first one is one where you can do, you don't have to do it in the wrestling room, but you need to do it with your athletes. Sometimes you might have a meeting or whatever, but a couple weeks into practice, wrestling's so competitive, wrestlers have a hard time, uh, let's say, being positive toward each other. And in the wrestling room, it will be really important. And maybe it, it'll take one of those positive comments that'll spur one kid to do better. That's all it takes. If you can improve one person by doing this, that's that's our goal sometimes. You know, it's it's not always, you know, I, I've done this probably as a, a teacher, and I'll kind of steer off my thing here. But uh, the masses, teaching the masses is great, but finding a way to find that, get that one kid to respond. Uh, makes it all worthwhile. Um, I do this in a lot of activities and labs that don't necessarily fit every person. And some kid might say, what is this? You know, why do I have to learn this? You've heard that probably as a teacher. But if you can respond to them that you're going to find something that, that hits, you know, the right spot in your heart and your soul, and it'll catch somebody. And that's why, that's why you're in teaching and education, I guess. Okay, let's, let's go back. But this first team building activity is basically to build greater team cohesion, increase trust uh, in the team, uh, create a good feel moment, but it also in any group size, I put all the stuff, the materials you would need, a large index cards, pens, a, a piece of masking tape for each participant. Now this is kind of interesting because the reason you need the tape, and you might even take it as wrestling tape, do something kind of interesting, uh, but what you need to do is you provide these index cards and pens and you place them on the backs of your athletes. You tape them on and what happens is the athletes have to go around and say something or write something on their card that is positive. For an example, um, I like the way you're doing your high crotch. Um, I watched you, you know, wrestle uh, last weekend. I thought your sportsmanship was great. And you can give suggestions of what some people should write. But I think the athletes, if they really know what they're doing or care about their teammates, they'll write something good. Maybe you only have them write on five of them. But part of this is, is to stay positive and to give some positive feedback. You know, um, sometimes this, this moment of getting mental clarity is about as, as good or about as important as anything in the wrestling room. Uh, be able to mentally envision something. Um, but basically, it says the instructions, once everyone is, uh, basically, once all the participants have written on the backs, ask them to remove the card and go somewhere quiet in the room and read them. It's not to read them to any, anybody else. Ask all of the, basically, the wrestlers to be silent during that part of the activity and give them ample time to complete it. Basically, to take in the information that no feedback that the other wrestlers are giving. Once everyone has read their comments, bring them back together for for basically a debriefing. Uh, ask them how the activity made them feel. And that's kind of very important because you learn about your athletes. Make them talk. Make them correspond. Communicate with you. Um, that's the only way you're really going to get to know them. Some kids don't say enough, and you need them to participate. Become good team leaders. Emphasize that we all need to have positive feedback about ourselves and challenge them to do this in their everyday life. Uh, share a personal story or have someone in a group share a personal story. Basically what I was looking for there in the personal story is, you know, um, just remember when you're having a hard time and somebody, you know, probably brought you back, you know, back, back into reality maybe. Um, I had a coach that used to have one-liners. Um, Ken Gabriel was his name, and he he would find a way 
in the darkest hour when you're feeling the lowest to make you smile and laugh. And I, it's a special ability some people have, but it was positive. It was something, it was not negative. You know, why, why are you all upset over there? No, whatever. It was, it was something, you know, that made you smile, made you think. And, and I wish I had that ability. Some people just know how to get, you know, under the person's skin in the right way to, you know, lift them up and, and that takes a, takes a special person. But I think you can find those people within your own wrestling room to, to lift other people up and support them. This is the whole idea of the team building, you know, to find out what these kids really need, want, um, enjoy, and appreciate. And then, then give that appreciation back. You know, FCA, um, I've listened to a lot of their stuff. And I wish I'd, I've never really, I've never been involved, but I go to their team huddles and everything at the state wrestling tournament. And I watch how positive it is. And that's what I want. I want it to be positive. Okay, a couple other things. It, it takes team building activities, very effective with wrestling teams. It creates great positive energy. And basically always encourage your wrestlers to cheer on and I just put it I should have and and support all teammates okay all teammates I don't care who it is it could be the person that's lost every match or someone that's won them all you need to support them all equally cheering for them getting to their mat side um not just hanging out in the stands and thinking just about yourself it's about the team okay the next one here's the second one you could try and we did this and it would become kind of funny because um, in the doldrums of, of January, this was pulled out once on us, and it was he said, we're going to do something and see if we can. So we actually got kind of negative in the wrestling room once where everything just, you know, you have to win. You got to do this. You got to do this. And and all of a sudden, you know, it, it didn't, be, it wasn't that fun. So until the coaches said that they had to remain positive, and if we caught them, they'd have to do 2 or 22, they called it. And so... Here, I'll read this to you on how I put this out. And you might be able to change the rules on how you want to do it a little bit. But this is one I call positive catch 2 or 22. All teammates must know the rules to this team building activity during practice. This is for the coach that has a hard time saying something positive. That's the main focus here. Where And then it's also for some of those wrestlers that can't stay positive within the room too. Now, during practice, all comments must be positive in nature. That seems simple, but guess what? If you're caught by a coach or even the coach caught by a wrestler, he owes two push-ups. Okay, now that doesn't seem like much, two push-ups, but that's if he says two positive comments in the next minute. Or he owes 22 push-ups if he doesn't say two positive comments. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, if, if you're caught, somebody says two or 22, and then they keep going. Um, if it's if they're drilling or whatever, and so I put an example up here. It says, Joe, that shot was horrible. You know, and in that instant, when caught by the person, he, they say two or 22, and keeps practicing. And the, all of a sudden, the coach is going, oh, they might be kind of mad, but they're going, oh, yeah, I didn't say something positive. So that person knows that they must say two things positive in the next minute, or they owe 22 push-ups. So basically, sometimes... They'll say, okay, I, I like the way you set up that shot. You know, it was that was good, but you need to do this. You know, it's, I don't think by somebody saying that shot was horrible, it was coaching. You know, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken, but I think some of you guys understand that too. That's that's not coaching. That's, that's putting somebody down. Yeah, that sh shot might not have been good. No, but that's not fixing it. So we have to take a different approach as a coach. And, and we have to figure out how we say those statements different. And if we stay positive, bait them a little bit, you know, you know, uh, you know, your movement was good. You're a little slow. No, but that's, that's not a negative comment, you know, saying you're a little slow or you might want to say, guess what? Here's what you're doing wrong with that shot. You know, your, you are, your head is down. You're, you know, you're not penetrating. There's so many things you can do besides what you just did there. Let's, let's fix it. You know, I, I think that's so much better. Let's fix it. What do we need to do to make it better? By saying it was a horrible shot, didn't fix anything. But uh, you start realizing what you say means something. And and they'll start catching you saying negative things. And then you got to think. 
sometimes you got to think before you talk, and that's that happens with all coaches. We need to get to that place where we are coaching naturally and not and not criticizing naturally. I've had those coaches that can't say anything positive, and I wish we'd have had a game like this where they'd have realized that what they're saying is is not good enough because it wasn't fixed anything. By saying I have a horrible shot, it doesn't tell me what I need to do better, what I need to what I did wrong necessarily, or what I even did right, because maybe part of that shot was good. Maybe I had something you know what was wrong. And there, I'm not saying all coaches are this way, but there are several coaches that can't find a way to say the positive things the right way, and maybe this will help them, this activity. It also help, it'll also help with those wrestlers in the room who, for some reason, uh, you got negative Nelly over there that, oh, I don't want to do this, and, you know, why do we have to do this? And we find them every once in a while, those whiners. And so somebody just says 2 or 22, and they'll, so, and they'll think about it. And it'd be at the end of the practice, when everybody's done, somebody might have compiled, you know, if they don't find a way to say two things positive in the next minute, they might say, okay, yeah, I, I love these push-ups, you know, and it might be a sarcastic positive thing, but at least it was positive and it's not, uh, I didn't want to do this, you know, why do we have to do this for incident? And, and I've had a few of those athletes, but usually you can snuff it out pretty quick. I uh, know, you know, but uh, there's different ways to do it. But I thought those would be two kind of fun activities. I'm hoping some people will try um, you might be able to figure out some way you could talk to Joe better on there, and I put a little spot there. There's also one more thing here where if you want to go in, there's one more link that I found about team building for coaches and how it's important. I know you can find other things to research. Uh, I've been on here a half hour. This is day two. I'm going to post this on YouTube. You'll have an opportunity to watch this day one and day two. And then what I will do is tomorrow... That will be day three. I'll put out some information on what we're going to be doing next. So everybody enjoy. Um, have an opportunity to watch this. I do appreciate it. You guys have a great night. John Gums, Dakota Grappler.